Hello, listeners. You're into the Known and Ever podcast summer special. I'm your host, Natalie Bromley, and this is part one of our episode entitled Sell or Stay. We're going to be joined by our regular panellists to have a look through the current squad as it stands to see who we think is going to be here at the start of the championship campaign, who's going to be sold, who we would quite happily see out the door, and those areas that we think we need to improve. I'm joined by my colleagues, Tom Whitaker and Adam Dennett, and we're going to start this episode looking at the defence. We're going through goalkeepers, our defenders and our central midfielders. Who do we need to stop those goals going in next season and to basically hold the fort? Let's go. Gentlemen, hello. How are you both? How are you doing without some without football? It's the summer. It's quite nice to right. watch us get battered every week. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. Do you know when you start something? And I was like, as soon as I said it, I was like, I've just completely set Tom Whitaker up for a really terrible opening where we go, oh, it's so depressing last season. Um, Adam, you must be looking forward to the Euros though. Yeah, definitely. That is uh, that is something to look forward to. I think I was quite looking forward to a bit of a break, like a lot of Burnley fans, but then all this manager stuff kicked off and uh, just had to delve straight into it again, haven't we? So yeah, uh, we plenty to talk about. It is. Well, let's start with the manager situation. Now, listeners, we have obviously just done um, a couple of episodes. And if you haven't yet checked them out, do listen to episodes one and two of company to buy in we close a chapter on that one but of course we finished off the second part of that episode by looking at the managerial situation who was in the running who did we want in there so we've covered this in depth and um, we're just going to start this episode with a little bit of an update um the athletic um published an article this morning uh, basically saying that preliminary interviews are due to begin this week um but former Derby County Chelsea and Everton manager Frank Lampard is set to be one of those spoken to, along with Liam Rossinoir, Rossinia. Oh, I knew I was going to say it wrong. Do you know what? I've practised that before as well. And I remember, I remember George saying the opposite of Ross Jr. So Ross Senior. Liam Rossinia, the ex-Hull manager, is also in the running. Um, uh, Scott Parker, he's apparently also going to be interviewed as well. Um, apparently, Alan Pardew is not expected to be involved. Probably no surprise there. Um, and Steve Cooper has dropped out of the running late last month. So he's no not put any offer on the table there. So what the board, what the article basically says is that the board are hopeful that they'll have a manager in place before the start of next season. I'm not entirely sure that was a headline that any of us really wanted to hear. We were hoping for a manager much earlier than that. Um, but they do have faith in the current managerial setup that if we do need to play two or three games at the start of the season, then um, Mike Jackson and Craig Bellamy will do a sterling job starting the championship campaign. Ouch, Tom. Perhaps not the update we wanted on the managerial position. Were we naive in expecting that we would fill this position pretty quickly? I, I don't see why it should take so long, to be honest. I don't see why it should be taken into the start of next season. Um, nope. They obviously had no idea that company was going to leave. Sure. They obviously aren't kind of savvy enough to, to fall the plan for these scenarios, like some clubs are like Brighton, for example, which is why you had Pace sending all the liar gifts off to um, Sasha Taviolari. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe that's just a bit of a, maybe it's something where they put that out in the press to and so that when they actually do appoint someone in the next few weeks, we'd feel better about it than we would have. You know, I think pretty much most of those managers on that list are, are fairly underwhelming in their own way. There's, there's nobody that really excites me there with no. Cooper being running. So maybe the, think, the thinking is, if we tell fans that we might not get one until the third game of the season and then we do actually manage to get someone in in the summer and they have got time to look at transfers, get their own players, etc. Maybe then you, you, it's just a bit of a relief rather than thinking, oh God, it's Frank Lampard or whatever. So I don't know. Surely it can't take that long. I don't see why it should. It's been reported that they're doing a second round of interviews this week. Is that right? So, well, I thought it was supposed to be preliminary about, ones this week. I, who knows? You know, who knows what's going yeah, on? Well, that's right. But unless they're doing about 12 rounds of interviews, you think you could get it sorted in the next week or two, wouldn't you? And yeah, you'd think so. You can't be going into the season with no manager. That would be a ridiculous scenario. So no. hopefully that's just paper talk. But like you say, there's so much stuff lying around at the minute. It's difficult to know what to trust and what not to. That's true. And the amount of things that get shared on social media by football influencers these days, and then they get 
quote tweeted by every single fan account going so your timeline is just full of the same things it just becomes a massive echo chamber of rumors and and content for people just to keep the clicks on the pages and i think we've got quite savvy to that um i think we've got quite live to what's hot air and what's a legitimate news channel um Adam, I think I, I share Tom's view. I'm not entirely sure I'm particularly excited about any of those managers on that list. I think we're all coming around to the idea that it's probably going to be Lampard. But we talked about this earlier on, the fact that Steve Cooper has ruled himself out of there and the fact that Sunderland are struggling to get themselves a manager as well after, what, three months of trying. Um, it's indicative of the fact that there's it's a very poor managerial pool at the moment plus as more higher profile manager vacancies than you would expect at this point of the season. Um, do we think that situation will change if Leicester appoints somebody other than Cooper? Um, and, and I guess is that, is that the, you know, should we be concerned with that or is that just reality at the moment with the manager bank? Kind of the state of the game, really, not just in this country across Europe. Mm. And I think we first saw it in Italy where, um, Back 10, 15, well, probably 15, 20 years ago, used to laugh at the state of Italy and Spain changing managers every year, every two yeah. years. Um, and I think Burnley are a rare case where we have been lucky enough to have longevity with managers. Um, other than other than laws, I think um I think either <laughs> well how, we've left at the like at the right time, really. Um, but it's yeah, the, all the late names linked are kind of recycled from other clubs near like nearly achievers um and it's it's difficult to get someone who is successful these days when you get fired every every six 12 18 months so yeah. it's just it it's a bit of a sorry, sorry stay i think cooper would have been my first choice which isn't really revel like a revelation but um i think if he doesn't get the Leicester job doesn't obviously doesn't look like you've got the Brighton job at all. But if he doesn't get the Leicester job, what else is better out there for Steve Cooper? Yeah, so it, it's a really good it, point. Is he going all out for that? And it could change. Things change quickly. We've seen that um, recently with with the company uh, situation. So I think it's still a wait and see. I would, I'd really like Tom said, I'd be very disappointed if we went into the season without a manager. The la you don't want to be changing managers during the season, never mind bringing one in once you've had a full pre-season. It, yeah, it just doesn't true. make any sense. So um, hope not, but you, you know, again, you never know these days, do you? No, you don't. Well, let's park that for now because, we, like I say, we're no likely to have an update um, very shortly on the managerial situation. Now, we did... We did delay this episode um, for a couple of weeks because we just didn't know what was going to happen with the manager because, of course conversations with players, incoming and outgoing players, is very much going to um, di be dictated by who our manager is going to be. Um, so at this moment in time, we're not entirely sure who's going to start um, the campaign next season and who's going to stay, who will be sold to balance the books, who will be um, sold to get down our quite inflated squad. Uh, we need to get some players down there and, and what areas we need to strengthen. I think certainly incoming players will be uh, one for the new manager. So we've slightly tweaked this episode and we're going to go with a, with a um, an exercise in sell or stay. We're going to look through each of our um, sections in our squad and figure out which ones of our players we would happily want to stay, which ones we think we should sell um, and just have a look at those areas and see where we think we need to strengthen. Um, part one of this episode is going to concentrate on the defensive and holding positions. So we're going to go goalkeeper, defence and central midfield. Um, stay tuned for part two, which will be available shortly, where we will look at our attacking midfielders, the 1,045,000 attacking wingers that we have who are all small and from Belgium, and uh, our attacking players. So let's stick with part one. No okay. Goalkeepers. Let us start with goalkeepers. As it stands at the moment, we have four keepers on our books. We have, of course, James Trafford. We have Lawrence Vigerou. We have Ari Murich. And we have the forgotten man, our very own Bailey Peacock Farrell, who has been out on loan all season. Now, Tom, generally speaking, four keepers is, is good. We've, we've got our clear number one and number two choices between Trafford and Murich. 
Um, very strong links, which is where we'll start with Trafford being on his way out. I think it's fair to say it's not been a huge success, hasn't his first season at Turf Moor. But the rumours are that Newcastle are very, very interested in him as a replacement for Pope when he does retire at a rumoured fee of around 15 million euros. Um, so I guess I'm going to come straight with this one. James Trafford started last season as our number one, uh, dropped to number two towards the end of the season. Um, is he, for you, a sell or a stay? I think when you're in the position we are where we're going to need to sell probably three, four players, we need to make some money. If if someone is offering you 15, 20 million for your second choice keeper, you've got to take it. It's just a no-brainer for me. I don't I don't necessarily dislike him. I, he's difficult. I know some people say, oh, he's going to be the next England keeper. I'm not 100% sure about that. He's He's been pretty mediocre, let's, let's be fair, in the time that he's played for us. If he was a starting keeper in the Championship next season, I'd be happy with that. I wouldn't mind at all. Um, he might even add yeah. a bit to his value if he had a good season. But as I say, I think just with the position that we're in, we need to sell three or four. It's just that uh, he, he's not as good as Neil Rich. If someone is going to offer you that kind of money for him, just a no-brainer for me. Nothing personal. But we're but, selling him as a loss, though. It's going to be a loss. And the, well, I don't think they'll sell for a loss. I think that'd be crazy. Um, what did we, well, the trouble with this is as well, it's like I've heard about 20 different figures for what we paid for him. Some people will That's tell you true. 9 million with add ons, some people it will tell you it was 20 million up front. If we say, I think likely what we paid is like 15 million plus add ons, unless there was an add on for, for dropping 800 crosses, I very much doubt he activated any of the clauses. So I don't think we'll have paid anything extra. Um, so if if Newcastle are going to give us 15 and the reports are saying we're holding out for 20, then we're making a small profit. If not, we're kind of breaking even. Um, I think that's all you can you can ask for really. And if the, if we get a sell on or we get some clauses as part of, added on to the 15 million, as I say, it's just you just can't turn that down. I don't think I wouldn't sell him for a loss, but I don't think we'll we'll be in that position to be honest. I'd be surprised if we were anyway. Yeah, no, that's fair. So at least I think that leaves the obvious question, Adam. If we are selling him to break even, um, do we still go? The whole point of bringing Trafford in is that he's supposed to be um, the next goalkeeper who's going to replace Pickford as England number one. He's already in the England setup. He got called up to the England training camp ahead of the Euros. He's obviously very much in Gareth Southgate's um, mindset. He's clearly very young. He's clearly an experience. We've said many times on this podcast that company's management of him last season was appalling one of the worst mistakes that he made last season um is it worth at any point keeping hold of him and trying to develop him to get him for a bigger profit or are you in the same camp as tom and we sell now i think i think we sell now as well um okay. mainly because of we're gonna have to sell a few players like tom said and um and he's the one with market value which is a 15 15 million and we've got the replace well not a replacement we've got new rich already so Who's our preferred for me it's one? a it's it's an easy sell for me i i didn't really see much of him before he came to burnley last season hasn't done much to i thought we might struggle to get the money back for him to be honest um so if with newcastle sniffing around he may go on to have a brilliant career becoming the number one um but it's all potential at the moment and we i don't think uh, with the position the club will be in, having spent so much money last summer, um, I I think it's an easy sell at, at the money that we've yeah, seen in the press fair. at the moment. I agree. So with bearing that in mind, that leaves us with three goalkeepers. Um, championship season is three keepers enough? Now, obviously, Peacock Farrell spent all season out on loan, wanted first team football. He spent the last two seasons out on loan, um, suffered quite a serious injury around March time and, and, and missed a lot of the, the final end of the season. Um, but that still leaves us if he comes back with three keepers. Is that enough for the championship or would you be out there looking for another one? Uh, I think you you probably keep uh, one of Peacock Farrell and Vigoro and then maybe bring an experienced goalkeeper in um, as, as number three. Yeah, that that's why I'm, I'm thinking keep one, sell one, um, and and probably bring bring one in um, for for cheap. That's my, fine. My well, thoughts. to be fair, bearing in mind that Peacock Farrell spent the last two seasons out on loan, that would make sense that he's the one that we sell. Um, to be honest, um, keep Vigero yeah. and, and yeah, we've triggered, we've triggered the one triggered the one year deal. I think that will be with the intention to sell him for yeah, I agree whatever fee we can get. 
Excellent. Um, well, that was an easy, what an easy section to start with. Look at that, listeners. It's almost like we planned this. Start with the goalkeepers. Nice and easy, not particularly controversial. Um, and our summary of that is that we um, we sell James Trafford for balancing the books. We sell prob- we sell one of Vigero and Peacock Farrell, which is probably going to be Peacock Farrell. And we bring in a new, an, ex- an experienced keeper to back up um, probably Vigero and Murich. All right, Murich returns to the championship next season then as Burnley's number one. Bring on the popcorn and the palpitations and the general antics in Hollywood that our favourite keeper brings. Okay, moving on. Our next section is our defence. Now... This is a funny one. Um, This is a funny one because it feels, and I've said this a few times this season, it's felt to me at times, Tom, that we've had about 400 million central defenders on our books, but none of them are ever available. It's just been the oddest season for injuries and players falling out of favour. And we we started this season without any indication as to who our preferred centre-half pairing is. Um, let's start with the obvious one, um, Asignon, who we were hoping to um, keep as turned us down. He will be leaving at the end of his one-year deal, but Maxima Stev has now signed for us. So let's have a summary of where we are in terms of... Let's start with our central defenders first. We've got Dar O'Shea, Jordan Bayer, um, I can't pronounce his first name, so I'm not going to, Ekdal, we've got Aldekiel, and we've got Estev. Does Delcroix play in the centre? Or does he play in the wing? I can. I don't know if we've seen him play, have we? Hopefully yet? he doesn't play. Well, yeah, well, that's very useful. Thank you, Adam. Um, <laughs> I don't really know where. He does I he think play? He does he play centre half the odd game and left back the odd game? That's right. Well, let's let's put him in the left back option then, because that's where we're a little bit weak. Um, and then we've got um, out on loan at the moment. We've got Egan Riley, Connor Roberts, Luke McNally, and Owen Dodgson. Owen Dodgson plays at centre half, doesn't he? Um, is he left back god my god I, do you know what it's been that long since I've kept an eye on our loan dealings I can't remember where off these players play so this is going to be an exercise listeners in uh, re, reuniting, reuniting ourselves with our players so lots of centre halves there um, Jordan Bayer has obviously been out injured for a long time Ekdal had injuries has fallen in and out of favour O'Shea's been the one constant but really struggled at Premier League level um, Asignon's left us um, so yeah, so he's a like. Well, we don't need to worry about him just yet. Alda Keel didn't play at all last season. He just didn't feature. Um, Estev has signed for us. So, any obvious ones there, Tom? With who you would sell? Um, this to me feels like this might be a section that we're not selling anybody. That we're going to keep all of our defenders. Or are there anybody there that you think that we need to get rid of? Uh, I think probably fair to say McNally's not going to. Not going to be a starter. So he's he's had a couple of loans in the championship. You think we've probably got a couple of million for him for a championship. Yeah. So probably sell him. Uh, I think maybe a Stev is is a player that I've heard links to. There's not that many of our squad who I've heard you know other, other clubs are interested in. You know we were all worried about losing Burge, but I haven't heard any Bergerians. But I've heard a couple of the Stev ones. Um, I think you've you've listed the five centre halves there. I think. Uh, O'Shea will be fine in the championship. I think his staff will be really good in the championship. Yeah. And we know from the, the season previous that Ekdal, Bayer, and Alder Keel are all really good championship centre halves. I think Alder Keel really did struggle in the Premier League, but he's very young still. So um, if if we had all those five next season at centre half, I'd be saying we don't need to get anyone in. I think we're happy with all those. Um, do we keep all five though, Tom, or do we sell any of them? I think if we're going to sell any, I think the one that is going to be interesting is Estev. What I've but he's just signed, it's just triggered his deal, his, his, his deal though, it's just signed. Yeah, but it's like you were saying with the got Farry, you know, they, they extend his contract by a year, but then you sell him, I think it's, I think they had to, the way the deal was structured, they had to sign him regardless. Right, okay, that's fine. I think if, you know, if we've paid, I think it was 12 and a half million reported, if we've paid that, if someone in the Premier League comes to us and says, we want to, we'll give you 15 million for his death, I think you're probably taking that, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah. Same with Collins, you know, we said we had him a year and then we got relegated and we sold him. It's it's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, I think I'd be able to keep him. I'm not desperate to get him out the door. I think he'd be, be good next season. I think he's got a bit more physicality than our other centre-halves as well. But he's just the one that I can see there being 
interesting. I can't really see anyone coming in from the Premier League for O'Shea after the way he played last season. And obviously Bayer, Alderkeel and, and Ekdal barely featured. I suppose the only other question might you have is the injuries, like you said, a lot there's so many of Ekdal's seems to be made of glass. Bayer missed most of last season. Alderkeel, well he was he played sort of five, ten games, didn't he, and then just disappeared. I don't know if he was injured or ill or what. So He was having to play at left by though at the beginning of the season, which yeah, was not he, ideal. He got well, like a few of the players he got hung back to drive by the managers into, so you do feel for him to, to that to that degree. But that would be the only question mark, I suppose, if with the injury records of a couple of those players, maybe you would want even maybe to keep hold of McNally or get someone in who's a bit more kind of championship savvy just as a bit of a backup. But if we start the season with those five at centre half, I'll be happy. The only one that I can see is Mitt really cashing in on is, is a step. Yeah, that's fine. No, I agree with that. I'm not in any rush to sell any of these, and I'd be quite happy we start with those five. Um, Adam, if we do keep hold of those five, what's your what's your preferred option for starting centre half pairing? Because that's a tough one. You've got five really good players there, and you can't play them all. Or do we just rotate? No, I think, well, I don't. I don't think that normally helps in that position. No, you probably needs need a partnership. Um, at the start of last season, I'd have been very happy with Bayer and Ekdal uh, starting as as our Premier League pair. I think O'Shea will should be all right in the Championship. Um, <laughs> it's really tough, isn't it? Because yeah. well, Ekdal and Bayer made a biscuits last year, weren't they? So um, made a biscuits. Is that a, te- is that a technical term, Adam? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's always, yeah, I'm trying biscuits. to work out what um, <laughs> what all of them were worth at the at the start, and um, and yeah, all I could think of were chocolate hobnobs for uh, for Eggdale. He <laughs> went off to Sweden the other week as well, didn't he? After five minutes, yeah. Uh, so for me, I think it'd probably be Bear and a Stev, but yeah, I don't, there's not, yeah. I don't think there's I don't think there's much between all of them, um, and yeah, I, I think that we should. Uh, probably sell Delcroix if we're classing as a centre back or not. Or if you're moving to left back, Egan Riley. I don't know. He were company's first signing. Were weren't he? We've, we've barely seen him uh, being on loan. Yeah, he so can. He, he can. He can go. Um, McNally's an interesting one. I I had him on the on the keep list after having two years in the Championship. Twenty four years old now. Um, but I suppose if you've got the other five, you probably don't need to keep him. No. Uh, and it might be a case of, in my mind. Because he's in the championship playing and did pretty well at Coventry the year before last when he went on loan there. Yeah, he did. Probably gets better in my mind because he's because of how bad the players are doing that we're actually watching week in week out. <laughs> um, oh dear. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too fussed if he if he did go, but I did have him down as a as a keep. And yeah. same as Tom, completely agree with the Estev. Really strange scenario. I've not really seen much of that before. But like Tom said, if someone comes in with fifty mil or any sort of profit, yeah, we get just, it. Oh yeah. So does that does that mean then that we, in terms of the fringe players, we sell Egan Riley? Um, if we do sell Estev, we keep McNally, try and develop him, um, and then we we keep Delcroix over in one of the left back positions, and then we then then we then have. Um, Ekdal, Alderkeel, O'Shea and Jordan Bayer. We've got four centre-half pairings. Now, normally I would look at that and say, well, four is plenty. You've got two two covers in there. But the injuries that Ekdal and Jordan Bayer have frequently, I, I'm, I don't know whether that's enough. But um, but we'll have five. We'll have five there. But obviously one of them is not that experienced when you've got um, Luke McNally. Does that feel like a good summary of where we are with the centre-halves? Yeah, are we happy with that? Yep. Excellent. Good work, team. Right. Let's rip the band-aid off the position that we have been struggling with for years now and for about three or four transfer windows has not been rectified. And that is, of course, uh, predominantly our left-back position, but now also our right-back position. Um, as it starts at the beginning of this season, we've got Charlie Taylor at left-back. We've also got Delcroix, who can play at left-back, we're saying, and Owen Dodgson, who can play at the left and we've got Vitinho and Connor Roberts, if he comes back, who can play at right. So we've got three at the left, two at the right, none of which fill us with an awful lot of confidence. Now, to be fair, Vitinho, towards the end of last season, really upped his game. I think we preferred him a little bit further forward in the Premier League, um, but he can cover a right back. But 
if there was one space in our entire squad that looks horrendous, Tom, it is both of our fullback positions. No yeah, it was a position that the previous manager saw fit to, to weaken for the Premier League, which is a bit strange. Unless we're yeah. going to go back in with a £40 million bid this time for Ian Matson, then uh, we're probably going to have to start looking elsewhere. I suspect um, we probably can't afford him now. I think that, that ship possible, may have... Yeah, yeah Champions well, we League Holland finalist. Without <laughs> course, do you know? Um, oh God, yeah. I keep forgetting about Vegost. He's not even on our. Is he on our squad list? I don't even. Oh God, you know what? That's that's for part two. <laughs> that's for part two. Yes. Sorry, carry on, Tom. Carry on. So I think fullback. I think we're going minus match, and we're going back to what we had for the promotion season. Which yes. uh, I think on the right side, I think Roberts was was good in that season. I think he's a uh, probably a top end championship player. I don't think he's quite good enough for the Premier League, but I think he, I, if we if he's playing next season, fine with that. Same with Bettinho. Again, he's not a Premier League player, but as you said, he you know he puts a shift in. He's uh, he works hard. I think he's a good backup option on either side, left back or right back. Yeah. Um, I think there's been. I think I remember hearing that a couple of months ago we'd signed a guy from PSV. Was he called something Sambo maybe to play right oh, back? Oh gosh, I Whether did. I'd forgotten probably. about him. Yeah, he's yeah, not showing I don't up know yet. If that was it? like dependent on Vincent Company staying or whatever. I don't because that's kind of gone quiet. So. Maybe we'll have a player for that position already. Who knows? And I, I guess it really, you know, you would have said if his company was still here, you said Roberts will be gone because he's fell out with him. But now, not sure. Yeah, and it's exactly with Taylor on the other side. I think if Taylor was playing left back for us in the Championship next season, I'd be more than happy with that. But I think he probably would have gone if if company had stayed. But now it's it depends who comes in, I guess, and then it depends as well what other offers he gets. Is he going to get a Premier League offer? Not sure. Maybe he would. Maybe he wouldn't. Um, I'm not sure Charlie Taylor would. And, and I think I love Charlie, Charlie Taylor and the amount of respect that I have for him for what he did last season when he'd been dropped two seasons as first choice. It was all, like the manager, again, another one of his awful man management statistics was to come out publicly and say he was going to resolve the left back position in January. And Charlie Taylor showed up every week, put a shift in, was professional. I've got so much respect for him. But the reality is, is when we first got promoted, when we first got relegated, just before company started, our team, we sold everybody apart from, and Charlie Taylor didn't get sold. So if two years ago, when he was playing in the Premier League week in, week out, nobody came in for him, two years later with another relegation under his belt, who in the Premier League's going to come in and offer him a deal? I just can't see it. I think he, and I think he will probably stay with us for that reason. But you're right, Tom, to have Connor Roberts and, and Charlie Taylor in our fullback positions, but it's it's just I think right back will be all right between Vitinho and Roberts, but left back again, what do we give Dodgson a chance? He's impressed on his loan deals. Yeah, I think he's probably at that age now where he's had two or three loans. He's had, been at some good clubs as well, been at Barnes a bit at Dundee. I think it's like he's either got to be around the first team or you've got to be looking at moving on at that point. Yeah. Similar to players like Phillips, um, Benson that went to Barnsley, you know, like they did have those couple of years around the first team or going out on decent loans. If he's not ready for it now, we've been relegated, then he's probably never going to be. But that's probably a question for a manager. And then, and that's, you know, that's why we need to get it sorted sooner rather than yeah, later. Yeah. Different managers have different opinions on that with Dodgson. But I'd be happy with, with keeping him as a backup. It's not something we've done well in recent years, is having players from the youth team going through all the good young lads we've had with before. So uh, for that reason, it'd be nice to see him kept on. Um, I'm not bothered about Delqua. He can, he can go for me. I think he's. Yeah, I'm not that impressed uh, with well, it. Again, yeah. then, very much. Unless we don't have backup, that's the problem. Uh, if, yeah, if and then it depends as well what kind of funds we've got. Like, mm. again, it, it's like if you if the new manager's only got like I don't know, 15 million to spend, Sage pulled that out, you know, off the top of my head. But is is left back the priority when you've <laughs> got Taylor? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If if you've got Taylor Delquar and and Dodgson all there, do you really want to spend? three million pound on a left back well, no it doesn't make sense it depends on it and it, obviously it's the difficulty of talking about it before we know what the budget is and the is, etc but uh, uh, to me that's not as long as we can keep hold of taylor that's not pressing if taylor yeah. decides he doesn't sign a new contract then Eat. that's <laughs> yeah yeah we're in trouble Dodgson or delco to be the starter but i'd be happy with either that's back up or both of those back up so 
yeah, I guess we're all we're, we're waiting on Taylor's decision. I, I, I like Taylor, and I hope you just stay. So yeah, me too. If does then I'm happy with that. Excellent. Um, Adam, any particular changes in opinion with that? Is there anything you would do differently, or are you happy with our summary where we are with defence? I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few of the players that we think will will stay, like maybe Taylor Roberts, that might as the club burned any bridges with what's gone on yeah i know obviously the manager's gone but he's the only one that's gone roberts was very much um flirting with leeds when when he went there initially obviously it didn't work out the way he wanted all all that leeds wanted um and he i don't know his character has been brought into question before just before the world cup and will will he want to go again obviously he's He's a good, very, like Tom said, very good championship right back. Um, I just wonder if there's some of the established players that might push for a move this summer. And I wouldn't be surprised if Taylor did leave just for a fresh start. He's been here, what, seven years, eight? Yeah, seven, eight years. Seven, eight years. Um, Yeah. It it seems like if we're not committing to a manager early, why would players commit to... Yeah, I don't know who they're going to be playing for. ...what they're signing up for. And I'd... Roberts is an interesting one because he, he is a bit of a funny character. He is a bit out there, but um, I'd be happy with him and Vettinho at right back, definitely <laughs> um, in the championship. Okay. But I, I just wonder what, <laughs> what the what the atmosphere is behind the scenes still, yeah. even with um, with the manager moving on. That is a very good point. Okay, let's leave the defence there then, and let's go into the key area, which is our central midfield area. Um, where we've kind of put this in in our not necessarily defensive players, but just mainly non-attacking players, and we've put these down to a current squad of Josh Brownhill, Sander Burge, Aaron Ramsey, Josh Cullen, Masengo, and Bastian. We're going to leave Mike Trezor and Scott Twine for next episode. We consider those more of attacking midfielders. So that's where we are now. Tom, the ob- no, actually, let's stick with you, Adam. Um, the obvious prime candidate for a sell a profit from our central midfield is of course Sander Berge. Um we are all expecting to have to sell him we don't think he's going to stay with us in the championship but is it fair to say that we'd all desperately like to keep him he's the one isn't it that I think we're all going to be the saddest to lose yeah he was the one bright spark weren't he last season um, real um, just yeah the best best player I think he had a couple well, a few off games in February time when we were really really bad but overall, head and shoulders above the rest of the team, and he's shown previously in the championship with Sheffield United. Is is I don't like this phrase, but he's basically a cheat code in the championship. Is um, he was the head and he was the best player in the championship for a, a year or two before we were there with them, um, and he were a key part of Sheffield United's promotion last time. I think we can pull that. Like we only signed him last summer for twelve million because they were only a year left. I don't think it's worth selling him unless we get an offer north of 20 million. And I know that might yeah, sound ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but that gives us real funds to be able to improve that area if he was to go. But anything less than that, I don't I don't think we um we should need or want to want to sell him. Um okay. he'll be he'll be a key cog in us, us getting back to where we want to be if if we can keep hold of him. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Tom, it's it's highly unlikely that we will, but and I think that leaves us. Let's let's assume therefore that that Sander Burge does go. Um, Josh Brownhill and Josh Cullen are absolutely um, solid midfielders in the championship. We've we've had that partnership before. Um, Josh Brownhill is one of those candidates who is never quite good enough for the Premier League but very very good at the championship and he kind of straddles the two leagues um Josh Cullen was brilliant in the in the Premier League towards the end of the season um we've got Masengo who's despite not playing any games yet is an unbelievable crowd favorite because we love him um and Aaron Ramsey's yet to fulfill his potential um but you know we expect a season in the, in the championship would be fantastic for him um Samuel Bastian, I'd probably sell, but that doesn't look that bad a central midfield, particularly for the championship. No, again, I think if you assuming that we do lose Birch, I, I think Brownell and Collins are a good starting pair in the championship, as you say. Brownell can play a bit further forward as well if we need him to. Yeah. I don't know a lot about Masengo. I think probably if he didn't have a good Instagram that 
that nobody would really be that interested in. <laughs> play. Look, we needed something season. last season to cheer us up, Tom, and we went with Miss Engel's Instagram. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, it isn't your fair Instagram, so maybe that is. <laughs> Um, Bastian, I agree. I don't, probably not not quite good enough. No, let's get rid of him. And I think probably he's one that, without company, he would be that fussed about staying either of them. I thought. Um, yeah, I think I think you summarised it pretty well there. I think the the options that we've got are, are good. Um, you perhaps maybe just want a little bit more depth. That's that would be anything. Yeah. And cool. we'll, physicality. Do you think we'll miss JBG? Like, I know he played out wide a bit, but when he slotted in in the middle in the championship a couple of years ago, he came on and made a difference. Yeah. A lot, not much. Like, there's not much think... trickery in in that that midfield few. I don't. But that was the only thing I'd add, really. Talking about that. like deeper lying midfielders, though, I don't think he ever played sort of there. I think no. if yeah, if he would yeah. be more long, like like we said, Trezor and Twine for the next episode. I think he'd be more in that category. I think. Yeah. Than Jay, than and yeah. JBL, yeah. to be fair, if we if we manage to keep him for another season again, we'll speak about him in the next episode. He could do that that role as well. Um, I think I think for me, what I question. Tom, actually, well, let's move this to you, Adam. Is that it's not just the depth of that central midfield position, particularly if we get some injuries? It's a long championship season. Is it strong enough physically? Because the championships are very physical league. That's my question mark around our defence. Now, I think Cullen and Brownhill are, but the replacements that we've got for them, if they get suspensions, which in the championship you do, um, the rest of the central midfield looks a little bit fragile to me. Yeah, I think if if we sell Burge, it's we're obviously in need of um of some more legs in there. Um and hopefully proven championship um midfielder or Premier League quality midfielder to come in with with the funds that that Burge brings in. Obviously we won't be able to spend all of it, but yeah, we'd we definitely need reinforcements in that area. And I think we were missing it probably at the start of last season when we were really lacking balance uh in, in the side. Those first few months, um, we were just crying out for legs in the middle, and until we kind of adapted later on, and, and we still didn't get any points. Like people have said, we were better, but the points comparison wasn't that great. Mm. Um, I think when we kind of missed out on like the Lacongas, who didn't make much of an impact at Luton, to be honest, but that sort of midfielder at the start, I think, um, I think we would need someone like that, especially if if Burge was to leave, which, like you said, is probably more likely than not. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame, is that? Um, I think, I think where I am with this now, I think a lot of this we, we t- we're talking about where we need some strength. What we haven't talked about this this episode is loan signings. So you know, we could go into the loan market and and the the center. Sorry, the the fullback options could be. Um, enhanced with loan signings a central midfielder we could get on loan from somewhere maybe somebody's coming back from injury or somebody who's at a premier league club and can't get into there so i, I guess if we are looking a little bit lighter on that with with burge we could go into the loan market tom yeah and depending on who we get obviously if, if we're linked with like lampard if we do get lampard for example yeah yeah he made good use of the loan market when he was derby manager in the championship he got some brilliant signings in on loan so and obviously yeah. company as well when we had him so i presume that'll be part of the thinking if they if they do get a couple of players that are half as good as Matson and Teller, then we'll we'll be in with a good shout. So yeah, that's that's a good point. Probably that yeah. Chelsea have got five or six of those kind of players knocking about in their reserves. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, let's get them back in there. Right. Okay. We've got a couple of minutes left. I think we will wrap up episode one of our sell or stay um series with you. We have gone through the defense and we've gone through the central midfield. Um stay tuned, Clarets, because in part two, we're gonna look at our attacking options for the championship and we're going to do a summary of where our squad looks ahead of that season. Thanks go to everybody who's contributed to this episode. Keep your eye out for the next post. I've been Natalie Bromley. This has been the Known and Ever podcast. Until next time. The Known and Ever podcast is brought to you in association with the TalkSport Fan Network. Our host and editor is Natalie Bromley and the show is produced by Matt Moss. Our resident statistician is Dave Roberts and our FPL expert is Adam Dennett. The analysis show team is collectively Tom Whitaker, Rich Steele, George Poole, Charlotte Rigby and Adam Dennett. Our music is provided by George Gaskell and our newsletter team is headed up by Jamie Smith. If you don't already, you can subscribe to our newsletter by visiting nonenever.substack.com. Thanks as ever go to our partners TalkSport. We are proud to be associated with the TalkSport Fan Network.